Hey, what's up YouTube? If you wondered how I built the display base in my last video for the MiG-21, then you're in luck because today I'm going to show you how I did it. The foam that I'm using I picked up at the hardware store is just a piece of insulating foam that's typically used in an attic. Before I started, I made a sketch of what I wanted to build. That way I could place the airplane on it and make sure it all fit and was proportional. I based it off some photos I found on the internet and I included a link in the description below if you want to see them. The plaster was a powdered mix that I got at the hardware store. Mix it up with some water and then smooth it across the base. I repeated this process. Since the plaster is fairly porous, I dampened it with water in between uh, my first and second layer. Once it was dry, I sanded and scraped it until it was generally even and fairly smooth. It doesn't need to be perfect because concrete never is. In my references, there appeared to be a small hill off in the grassy area, so I built it up with some scrap styrofoam. It really helps to break up the base and make it look not so flat. After I scribed the joints in the concrete, I did a little pre-shading and then basically just modeled the whole base with various shades of gray. I also added some cracks in later. I should have added those at the beginning, but I forgot, so you'll see me go back and have to do a little bit of pre-shading after I scratch those in. Evidently, my coverage with the gloss coat was not as good as it should have been because you can see some of the wash uh, soaking into the plaster and kind of dispersing outside of where this, the concrete lines were. But that's no matter. I'll rub it a little harder with the mineral spirits to get up the excess and it doesn't need to look perfectly clean anyways. I used the black pigment and tried to make scuff marks on where the plane might have frequently rolled over. For the rest of the tarmac, I used light uh, sand color and then kind of medium browns to just kind of make some variations.
There were a few points where I felt it was a little bit overdone on the pigments, so it's easy enough to use a wet paintbrush, remove what you did, and then just start over and try again. I decided to fill the ditch with some still water, so before I did that, I brushed a little green oil paint on there to show some algae. I wanted to get a static grass applicator, but I didn't want to pay almost $100 to buy one, so I compromised and I bought the parts to make one. I'm not going to go into details on how I made it because the creator of this kit that I purchased already did. They made a video, put it on YouTube, so you can check the link in the description below. I bought the kit off Amazon, and after I bought some extra pieces that I need, like the sifter, it probably cost around $40. Assembly was straightforward, but it helps to have some general tools around the house like a drill, utility knife, soldering iron, and a multimeter. I was very impressed with how powerful the ion generator was, which means it's easier to make the grass stand up. It was so powerful I didn't even need to touch the negative lead to the diorama. I just had it nearby, sitting on my desk. It seems to be a lot more powerful than what I've read about some of the reviews on making them out of the electric fly swatters. Finally, I filled the ditch with water and I turned it brown with a little bit of acrylic paint on a toothpick as I ran it through and evened out the water droplets that I'd put in there. Of course, keep an eye out for air bubbles. I opted to try to poke them out with the toothpick rather than burn them out because I did not want to start a brush fire. 